Okay, well, one of the first things, by the way, this, for whatever reason on my iPad, it just seems dimmer in here than usual, but I know that's not, can't be so, it's me, I guess. Okay, one of the things that I have lectured and lectured my classes about is be sure that whatever color you use in here, if it's a mixture, that you have enough left over to work internally here. And when you do the stripes, make sure you have enough left over. And of course, I didn't follow my own directions because I, uh, by the time I worked on this many of these, I've got it all mixed up and who knows. Okay, but this is my demo piece. I decided after the fact that I really need a little bit more stripe back in there. And can you see this one? Here, get up in here close. This one area is, you can really see the uh, stripes curving and going vertical here. And I kind of decided I'd like just a touch of that in there. So that's what I'm fixing to do next. I, uh, so I've made a mixture that's close. I am so in love with this brush. You know, it's really fun to have just a new tool or a new a pigment sometimes kind of shakes things up. Well, I got this to do just, you know, some big stuff. And then I just got so carried away with it, I'm kind of using it on everything. And um, I don't know if that's advisable or not. See, that's just a little bit got a little bit more red in it than the original mixture, I think. So I'm just going to put, see the thing about a brush like this, you can, at least with this one, it's working really well. You can load that brush up and I, and I you know, I want it wet all the way up. But then if I've got a little too much, if it's a little too wet, I'm doing something smaller, I will give it a rake like that. Okay, and this has got a stiff tip on it, so that's why you can do little things with it. If it didn't have a stiff tip, I wouldn't be using it like this. I wish they would make more brushes like that. I've got another brush that I spent more than twice as much on, and it doesn't have a, a it doesn't have a stiff tip like that. So let's see what we've got in here. I guess I need some more in here too now. And I'm just making these up because these are not consistent with what's underneath. In fact, they're, they're reflected from a totally different place. Let's just do that. In fact, I've done a really kind of lousy job here of I'm just going to put a hint or two of something doing that. Just because, well, because. Actually, I need something else right there. Whatever. You know, and that's the whole thing. When you're dealing with reflections, you can get away with murder. Uh, okay. Let's start there. Now... Uh, I need to, this is all just Prussian blue, so, so I don't have to mix anything. So the next thing I need to do is put out some Prussian blue. So I'll be right back. Okay. So, tell you what, let's do. I want some bright whites in here, just a few. Uh, in fact, I should have masked more down here. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, in order for those to be bright, this needs to not be pure white, which it's not. So I'm taking a little bit of, let me get it out here so you can see it. I left it in the palette this time. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, raw sienna. I want this to be dull. And I'm going to tint the cloth with it. And, let's see, it's not like I'm not going to tint it down in here, too. 
Kind of like seeing that vase stand out against this, though. So if I get it a little too heavy, I'll just do the blot thing. Because I've just kind of gotten into this blotting thing after watching Trevina do it. Uh, I've always got a paper towel in my hand anyway. So, you know, when you've got a paper towel, you got to find a way to use it, right? Just like that hammer. Okay, so I want some of this inside too. Okay, let me point out at this point, let me point out that, can you, you see the red on here, which our red is blue, but can you see that it makes a shape down in here like this, where the cloth is actually back up there okay so that's a really important area to make this feel right you don't have to get it really accurate but you need just sort of a nice curve there like that so I'm actually drawing it with my pencil just a little bit so let's put now let's put our cloth in here. And I wanted to leave a few extra areas white. Oops. Have a little more sparkle in there than what I had mapped out. Maybe right there. Alrighty. So this is so thin that I don't even care if it gets on top of my other stuff. Oops, I didn't mean for that to happen. Well, you know what? That's fine that happened. A lot of that will just look like um, like reflections. You don't know what's reflecting where in these things. You really uh, I was really kind of studying studying it the other day and uh, and it surprised me where some of the reflections were coming from. Like particularly like these lines on top of the water. Uh, that was a real shocker for me. So we'll do that. Okay. Now, while that's drying, let's come in and I have got some Prussian blue here because my background's Prussian blue. That's, my colors are really wet right now. And so I'm, I've been picking up stronger color than I intended to some of the time. So, here, I've thinned this out. Let's see what this does. What I want is I want a much lighter area than the background. And we're going to paint down to this oval. Got just a little too much water in there. You know, I think that's a little bit darker than what I want. Let's see, let's go ahead and extend that on up here. And then let's, let's just blot it. That's about right, right there. Let's put a little more water in this mixture. See what I get this time. Yeah, that's much better. I did not mask a little light highlight on this rim here. Uh, I think some people did. I think that could all be good. I want this to feel relatively smooth, although I don't mind having some little, you know, sparkles left in there. But I want the application here to look smooth, you know, like glass. I think I could go ahead and pull this on over to the edge here. Putting my hand in the wet paint down here. It'll be a miracle if this thing looks good when I get through. Okay, there. 
yeah, I think that's about what I wanted. And I'll, ex I'll explain. I'll show you in a minute uh, an example and so that you can kind of see where we're going. Because I know it's, it's, it's just the pits to just follow instructions and you don't know where it's leading. Not something that I'm cut out for myself, so I don't figure that that suits most people. You know, you can always just suck up a little of that color that way. Well, this brush doesn't, it would suck up. This brush would suck up the color a little better than that, except that I don't want to waste, you know, it holds so much pigment that it's sort of wasteful. If uh, It's pushing me towards more of a two brush strategy some of the time because I don't want to rinse it out and rinse out that much paint. See, a smart person might not have put those curlicues in there yet, but it made me feel good to see them, so I did. Okay, so we have that. See, it already feels a little bit more like glass, just a little bit. There is a little shape in here. You'll see it better when I paint it down here, but I'm picking out shapes that I think will work. If I put everything in here that is reflected, uh, it, it might actually get a little bit dull and muddy. I don't know because this has not, this has not been my, my thing to do this kind of thing. I'm doing this out of pressure from others. Okay, so let's just make a little curve there. I really should have another brush here. I mean, another little round brush. We'll just take this and we'll fade it out this way. Just kind of go around the curve there and stop. That, that's kind of a nice thing. Now, I don't really see that over here, but there is a little dark area. It just doesn't have much color in it. I think I'm just gonna make another one of these over here. I don't want this thing to go totally symmetrical, you know, but uh, when in doubt, let's see, I did rinse and squeeze this out because this really doesn't have much pigment in it. There we go. Okay, I kind of like that. See, that kind of adds to the water feel of the thing. Now. We're getting in down here. Let's see if this feels dry. Not dry enough. I got a head for the hair dryer. Okay, back. So now I've got my number uh, 10 black velvet. That's another brush that I really love. And they're affordable for classes. Okay, so let's... I, I know this is going to... This, this bothered some people in class. Because this is red, and I was painting in peach. I'll show you in a minute. And uh, and then, of course, this one is blue. And so it just creates confusion. But here we go. What we're going to do is just put in more of this, this background. And I'd say it's pretty much in there everywhere in some degree or another. Um, okay, let's see. Right down in here. You know, I might would just, this is all wet now. I might would just touch in a little bit of darker stuff here. No, I had, shouldn't have done that. I'll explain why in a minute. In class, I've always got people asking, well, what about that? Why are you doing that? You know, so uh, on a video, I don't have that. So I just keep pretending that they're there and uh, telling you to wait because I think I know what you're thinking. Maybe I don't. 
Who knows what anybody's thinking? Okay. You know, I didn't have to do all this on camera. Just not thinking. So, uh, this will probably turn out to be two videos. So, if you're... Uh, okay, uh, first of all, I produced three videos on, on the first part of this. And if you're paying... If you're working from home and paying me for those... Uh, Call that two videos, not three. I just have to make them uh, smaller because I can get them to upload more easily. Okay, so this and the next one would probably be one video, you know, would be equivalent to one lesson. All right, so we've got this. Now I'm going to show you one that I've been working on in Peach. It's not finished either. But what I want you to see is... I want you to see where I've started adding in more reflections. They're a darker value like this. See, in some places. So then I did another one in another class, same colors. And I didn't do so well with it. So let me show you. I guess it's going to work okay. But you see the contrast between here and here is not as great. And it just doesn't feel as much like reflections. Compare, uh, let's see if I can get the two of them on here together. If you compare this one with this area of this one with this one, you see how that bit of contrast in there really makes a difference. It, and that's, I think that's really pretty in there. And this is look, murky. So. Uh, that's part of our challenge is going to be to get these next values in here in a way that really works. I think I want to put a little something more up here. This rim, I plan to pick up a fine lifting brush and do just a little bit of a lift and then maybe add a little white ink highlight in there at some point. Okay, hold on. Okay, so let's get some, some of these reflections in here. When you look at this, there are a lot of little places in here. Even this stripe here has got a reddish cast to it. Some of those stripes do. But we're going to add in some of these shapes. And, uh, and I don't care if you decide you want to make some of them up. Um... Oh, so, I did not put those in the drawing because I did not want outlines around them. Because if you've got outlines around them, they just won't look right. So, a little bit of fresh and blue. And I'm just going to have to gauge this and see what I get. I generally like to put down color just... Well, maybe sometimes not on a face. Depends first stages on a face. I might not. But most of the time, I prefer to put down color that's either just right or a little too dark. Put it down nice and juicy and then suck up some of the color to get it the way I want it. So that's sort of my treatment here. So I'm looking at this little shape right there. And look, there's, see, there's a couple of little, like, stripey things in there. My brush is a little too loaded for the stripey things right now, but I'm gonna put some blue in. 
And the fact is, this area that's got water is a little murkier than uh, the color up above. I could put a little gray in it. I'm probably not going to. So see, I've got a little thingy like that. I think I'm going to soften that edge and give it a little blot. Let it, see, let it kind of just fade out. So let's take a tiny amount on the tip of the brush. And this shape is coming along here like this. I don't have it strong enough. One minute. Coming along here like this. And it's joining into there. And I want that to appear as a solid. I don't want one to overlap the other because the first one dried. You just uh, you just lose some effect that way. There's a little something like that. So I'll put that in there. This has got a chewed up edge on it because I erased there. And uh, there. Because I had a line drawn in there. Some of y'all have noticed that. Wasn't, wasn't one of my finer moments. I think this kind of goes back here and kind of comes out over this way. And then back up there. But see, you could put almost anything in here. I do like having some of the dark come up to the water's edge so that we can emphasize this this line at the edge later because I think that that has a real good effect. I'm just putting in a shape there that doesn't even belong. I don't know what it is. Okay, so you can see how that's kind of kind of working. If you can go back in and add a little water and make 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 it run to the edge. Uh, if you can get a little bit stronger edges on part of it. I've got just a touch of that in here. And I think it's just beautiful. Those little bitty edges that they're darker, but they're not darker like someone clumsily mishandled it. It's just that little extra crispness to the edge. This is right on top of an erased area and it's just not going to look that good. Uh, you may be erasing that area too. Um, my draw outs are not oh, I wouldn't say they're not always perfect. I would say they're never perfect. Let's just be frank about that. You get into the painting and then you see things. Some people wouldn't make those mistakes, but, well, there are some other people than me. Okay. So, let's let's just pull. I, I squeezed that out. I'm just going to pull up a little bit of that color. I want that contrast, but I don't want it to be, I don't want the contrast to be overbearing either. Uh, just about, that looks just about right. That, that's not very good. You, you notice I whispered when I said that. Uh, so, there's a shape right here. I have no idea where it comes from, what it means. It does that. I have no idea. And I don't have to know. But I could also put a little bit more of a stripe in there. And I could add a little bit of color into that stripe. Uh, oh, you know what? I want a little bit more edge along here. Because I like, like I said, I like to dramatize that little area where the water comes up to the edge of the container, vase, something. Okay, I'll come back here and just put a drop of water in. Let it chase it back, maybe. Oh yeah, there it goes. Am I staying on the, in the picture frame? Yeah. So, we've got that. Oh. Oh. We've got to go up in here and do something. 
Well, this is very, very, very confusing, and I didn't mean to create this confusion, but I have a red background here, and then I have some, uh, well, it looks like Prussian blue right there. I, I started putting it in, and I got carried away and just did the whole thing with it. Well, right here, there is a blue reflection that's probably coming from over there, and there's some other blues in here that might be related to that, or to something entirely different in the room that you can't see. I don't know. Uh, yeah, gee. So, but one thing I do see here is a darker band of red right there. So, I'm going to put that in. Only it's going to be in blue, of course. This whole thing would have been better if I'd photographed it with the blue, because this is really hard to, this has been really hard for some people to see what was going on in there. Okay, now you can see that I'm working really juicy, so I'm making a few strokes here to get it down ju just where I wanted it, but it's very juicy and the brush is very soft and gentle. Not to mention my light artistic touch. I think I'm going to increase a little of that right there. Okay. And, you know, I almost wonder if that's an extension of this. And I want a crisp edge here. We're going to put in a few highlights with lifting later. But, let's see, let's... Get a little bit more of the same stuff. And we've basically got a, a mirror image of this over here, except it's kind of broken up. In fact, these seem to come out over there just a little bit, over the, our, our disc in the center. But... I'm going to treat that disc very differently. It's more about grays and neutrals. And you know what? We could use... This needs a little bit of something else, doesn't it? And we don't have red in the picture. But I've got some greens. By golly, why didn't I do this sooner? Let's just, let's just drop a little green in there. It could, it, it could be there, you know, a little soft edge, just, yeah, you know what? I know I'm glazing this because this is pretty dry. I just, oh, that, that gives, that's a relief. That's so much prettier like that. This was getting just too static looking. It was just not not working for me. Let's is it dry enough that I can I either want to glaze it or or put it in there while it's really wet. I don't want to do the in-between thing and have things go off the rails. I think I don't want very much right here, just a little. Let's put a little green in that too. This is one of my favorite spots. Okay. Oh, that's so much richer like that. Now this, this is something that I just sort of broke up uh, in here. Oh. Let's get down in here. Let's get some darker areas right there. And that's where it gets a little darker and quite frankly, a little bit dingier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my Prussian blue and I'm going to drop a little bit of this gray that I mixed for the stripes. Let's see how this works. 
I dropped a little bit of gray into it. There we go. Okay. Well, let's come down in here. Because this area in the water is just darker and dingier and everything. Or Well, that's a lot darker. Tell you what, let's let's soften one edge. Oh yeah. Oh that feels good. Look at that. I didn't know that was gonna be such an improvement. Let's give it a little blot there. I really don't want edges on it. I'll just spread a little more of that color. It's got a little of that green in it, too. Or it's got a little of the green look in it, I should say. Okay, there. That's pretty. And as a matter of fact, that is so much better than this up here. That I'm really tempted to go back in. Would have been better if I just used that mixture up in here. So if you're doing this, and you haven't done it yet, I hope, because you're just now seeing this. So if you're doing this... Let's mix a little gray into that blue. See, I didn't do that with the peach. The peach didn't need it. This blue does. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's the way it needs to be. And I'm not doing it all the way down. See, I'm just putting it in there at that edge where I wanted to emphasize that edge. And maybe I'll put a little bit right out there you know you could get kind of caught up in this and actually start thinking like a painter instead of what i'm doing when i'm demoing all right so there just a little richer there now that's beginning to feel pretty good uh i think i've probably got enough time on this video that i need to stop it I'll I'll be I'll be back with more of this next day of whatever day this gets up. There we go. Okay. I so decided to come back and do one little thing before I shut it down. Okay. And that is this cloth down in here. There's a lot of overlap between the shadow and this area. See that has a lot of shadow color in it. It's not the blue. It's more the gray. I might have a little blue in with my gray, and I might just go ahead and pull a little shadow into some of this area. You could kind of decide where you want to stop the shadow. Maybe I'll taper it off right there. And... Maybe I'll pull a little shadow up into this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up there and I'm going to soften the edge. And this could go up over the other stuff too if you wanted. So like, here's my shadow right down there. And this is my same shadow color. Oh, that looks ragged. You don't want any ragged looking edges on this. You want it to be smooth like, like, you know, glass. Okay, so we'll just add this all the way from down here. Up this way. And... Soften that edge. I'm just barely, I mean, this is just, just really slight glazes of color, actually. Okay. There. And that feels a little more glass-like right there, doesn't it? As soon as we shade these sides a little bit, that's going to be the next trick on the next video. Okay. There. See you later.